Hello and welcome to my beginner's video for Sony Vegas Pro 10. This tutorial is for Pro 10, but it will be okay if you use Pro 9 or Pro 8. If you don't know what version you have, go up here to help and then go to about Vegas Pro and it will say everything you need to know about your version of Vegas. So I'm using Pro 10 for this video and this is what Pro 10 should look like the first time you open it up. As you can see it has a nice dark color scheme and then all everything's all positioned this way. We're going to change things up just a bit. Let's go up here to options first of all, scroll down to preferences, display, and then have this use Vegas color scheme unchecked and hit OK. This is just personal preference but in my opinion it looks better this way. So you just reboot the program and now Vegas will look like this. So this is just personal preference but I think it looks better this way. And now we're going to get rid of a few elements that I find unnecessary in Vegas. The first thing we get rid of is the trimmer. It's just this big square thing right here. We don't need it. So go up here to this tiny little X in the top left corner and click it to get rid of it. And now let's go over here to this tab that says Explore and click on it. And we're going to get rid of this. So now the four tabs we should have is Project Media, Transitions, Video Effects, and Media Generators. You should have no more, no less. And finally, let's get rid of this. This is the master volume thing. It's kind of unnecessary, in my opinion. So we're going to get rid of it. So now our Sony Vegas should be composed of three components. The timeline, which takes the bottom half of the screen, the tabs over here, and then the video preview. Now, if you would like to edit with your timeline on top, you can definitely do that. Just go to Options, Preferences, Display, and then have um, Display Timeline at bottom of main window. You can have that unchecked and hit OK, and then it just, swip, uh, it just swaps everything. But I like to edit with my timeline on the bottom. So I'm just going to have this checked and hit OK. So this is what my Vegas usually looks like when I'm editing. So, yeah, we're not going to change anything. We're going to actually change one more thing. And this is just our video properties. So let's go to File, and then go to Properties. And what we're going to do is change the template for everything. Because when I edit my videos, I edit HD video footage. So I need to kind of calibrate everything so that it works together. It, I know it doesn't really make sense. but So if you work with HD video, you should do this. Go up here to the template. And I'm going to use HDV 72030p, this one right here. And... I'm probably going to change this later and stuff. You don't really need to change anything. And just hit OK. And it will basically make your video preview uh, HD widescreen, whatever you want to call it. OK, so now we are done tweaking everything and we can start editing. The first thing you're going to want to do when you start a new project is bring media into the project media bin. So you go up here to File, Import Media, and then you can browse for your footage. Right here I have this... Uh, clip of like a waterfall or something that I found online. This is what it looks like. It has no audio. And so there we go. I brought the... I'm going ahead of myself. Let me get rid of this for a sec. So right now we have our water in the media bin right here. And if we want to bring it into the timeline, we just click and drag and drop it. And now it's in the timeline. We have these controls down here in the bottom. And this is basically so you can play, pause, stop, rewind, whatever. Everything's pretty self-explanatory. You just hit play, and then the video will start to play. Pause, and it will pause. Stop, and it will stop it. Pause and stop don't really have too much of a difference. And then you can also go to the start, go to the end, anything you want. One useful thing that I'd like to mention right here is a, some, a little feature called RAM Preview. What we do is we select the whole video like this. Just go to the top here and select it. Select all of it and then hit shift and B on your keyboard and it will conduct a RAM preview. And this is very, very useful when you're editing large product, uh, projects with multiple video effects and stuff. So take advantage of this feature, it's really good. So it's rendered that whole section and then we play it and then there's no frame rate issues or anything. It's perfectly smooth. Okay. However, if you don't want to do RAM previews all the time, you can go up, go up here to the preview quality and adjust it to something lower, like draft quarter. And then the quality will be lower, but there won't be as many frame rate issues. But for the most part, I just keep it on preview auto. Alright, so this video clip is kind of boring right now. I'm going to add a video effect to it. So let's go to video effects, and there's a variety of effects we can choose here. 
I like to choose um, TV simulator for a, a video just because it's really noticeable. We can go to TV look and drag it on and you'll see in the video preview that the effect has been applied. And we can also adjust the settings here. Like if I screw around with these sliders, you'll see that it changes the effect. And if I want to get rid of this effect, I go up here to this green thing with the red X and click that and it gets rid of it. Okay, so that was TV simulator, but you might want to use a more practical effect like color corrector. If you bring color corrector and then you can use any of these ones, like let's try purple. And it makes things very, very purple. And then same thing as the last effect, you can screw around with all this stuff. I'm just going to get rid of the effect. You can also adjust the brightness and stuff by going to brightness and contrast and then you know, using brighter, more contrast or something. Basically, you want to experiment with all the effects and find out which ones you're going to use a lot. I also have tutorials on video effects and how to use them in more detail. Alright, so let's say I want to add a fade to this video clip. What I can do is put my mouse cursor on the top left of the video clip, and I'll see this little icon here. When I see that icon, I can click and drag to the right, and I will have this thing on the video clip now. It's kind of like a wave, and then when you play it, it fades. So let's look at that one more time. You can also change the type of fade by right-clicking on it. One sec. Right-clicking on it, and then you can pick whichever one you want. They're all pretty similar. And you can also fade out. So with both fades on, it looks like this. and the uh, last fade's kind of lagging right now. And there we go, it lagged, so I'm gonna do a RAM preview. So now let's play it back one more time. Fades in, stays for a bit, and then fades out. You'll notice I have no audio on this clip, but if you were to bring in a clip that does have audio, it would just appear in a track right below it. All right, so now let's talk about splitting our clips. So I can use the mouse wheel to make a clip bigger or smaller, and it doesn't change the length of it, it just makes it look bigger than it actually is. So I'm going to uh, use my mouse wheel to make it about this size. And if I want to split a clip to get rid of these fades without manually deleting each fade, what I can do is click the end of the fade, which is right here, and then hit S on my keyboard, and that will split the clip. And if I want to undo that, I can hit Control z and it will regroup it. So I'm going to split this video clip and I'm also going to split it right here. So now I have three separate clips and I'm going to delete these first two. You can select multiple clips at a time by clicking on one, holding control on your keyboard and then clicking the other and then I can delete them both at the same time by hitting the delete key on my keyboard and now I'm left with this one clip. And with this one clip I'll bring it to the beginning of the timeline and then we can play it like this. It'll be a lot shorter. So let's say I want to add a transition to multiple video effects. So let's go to my project media bin and let's drag in the first water clip like this. Give it a few time to load and I'm just going to shorten it by clicking here, splitting it, and then deleting the last one. So now I'm left with two video clips. I'm going to bring them together so that they're touching and then go to my transitions tab and I can pick a transition. I'll do page roll. And I'll drink, uh, drag this one and you're going to drag it in between the two clips. And now we have just added a transition. And just like with the video effects, we can adjust all this stuff here. And now if I uh, do a RAM preview, let's see how this looks.
Okay, so now with the RAM preview done, we can play it. Here's our transition, and there we go. So now I'm going to briefly talk about keyframing, because it's a very important component in Sony Vegas and any video editing uh, program. So let's go to our project media bin and bring in the water clip one last time. And I'm going to delete it, or I'm sorry, I'm going to split it here. And I'm just going to get rid of the other half. And now let's add a video effect to it. Let's do TV simulator again, just for shits and giggles. So let's bring in TV look. And now I'm going to show you how to keyframe. So when you use Sony Vegas Pro 10, it says animate right here. We click that and then we get this thing here. So this little timeline here represents the time of the specific video clip. Right now we're at the beginning of the video clip and then this would be the end of the video clip. So what we do is take this playhead and we adjust it to let's just say half of the video clip. So I drag it to about halfway and then I adjust something like detail zoom. And now if I just exit this and I preview it, you'll see that I have an animation on my video effect. I have a better example right here. I'm going to get rid of everything and let's go to media generators and let's go to noise texture and standard turbulence. We'll drag this in. Now we have something that looks like this and we can change the colors too to something like blue and black. And then we go down here to animate and we're going to put a keyframe here. Let's put it halfway and then take this progress in degrees all the way up and let's put X down, Y up, and do the same and just you know, screw around with everything. This is just an example after all. So now we have created a crazy animation and if we play it, look what we got. This is really useful when you're creating intros for Sony Vegas. And it cuts off halfway because our keyframe is only half of the video length right here. But if I drag it to the end, then the keyframe will take place for the whole video. Yeah. Okay, so let's briefly talk about adding text to a video. Here in our Media Generators tab, we can go to the Text category, and then let's just drag this one uh, hot. And we drag it on top like this, and it will go in its own track. And I can say, Sexy, Sexy Video. And I can adjust the size. That's a little small. That's what she said. And I can also go to Placement and put it up here if I want properties, I can change the color of it and stuff, effects, uh, just screw around with anything here. And keyframes also work with things like text and panning and cropping and stuff. For example, I can go here to animate and let's put a keyframe here and bring this down. And now if we play it, we have this and it's just a little laggy. So yeah. And then finally, I'm just going to talk about panning and cropping. So let's go up to our text here. And sorry, I should have showed what I did there. Uh, you're going to click on this little icon here. It looks like a square. It says event pan slash crop. You're going to click that. And then this thing comes up. And then you can, you know, zoom in on things like this. Basically, this square with the F in the middle represents the camera view. So I can uh, focus in on sexy, sexy, or sexy, se. And then I can also keyframe it, just like I was doing before, and move that over here and zoom it out. I also have very many tutorials on how to do this in more detail. <clears throat> I have panning and cropping tutorials, keyframing tutorials, tons of stuff. All right, so we created a little video here. Let's go watch it from the beginning. So this is what we created. Sexy, sexy vid the O got cut off but whatever alright so we got this amazing video and I want to compress it into a file that's shareable through YouTube email burnable to DVD whatever so how do I do this I got this amazing video I'm gonna go to file render as right here go to render as don't go to publish just go to render as and I'm just gonna save it to my desktop and I'll just do a really poor quality video just go default template and I'll call this sexy sexy video and then I hit enter and the render starts and it takes a while sometimes especially if you're working with HD video or if your computer sucks really really bad or both um, but it takes a while and when it's done you can do whatever you want with this new video creation that you made 
you could upload it to a video sharing website.